ladies gentlemen and anything else that may be watching what is going on guys power back here with another video and today we got a little beta video so i saved up as you can see in the top right all my keys from the entire weekend i played a lot of this game uh <laughs> like i played a lot of the beta even though i was stuck on a level you know you, you can only get to level 30 played a pretty substantial amount of this game but either way i saved up my keys thought maybe it'd be interesting to make a video of opening for you if you don't opening all the supply drops so here we go First, a mauler, we got a head, silver falcon shotgun camo, okay, okay. Let's see what else? Got a contingency shotgun tactical pink for the snipers, wish you were here calling card. How long does it take to fabricate? Uh, we got more salvage. Tactical pink and the project calling card. Oh, we got a taunt. Taunt type 2. Oh, the common type 2 variant. Okay, but in the Bogart calling card. Silver Falcon knife camo. Party foul calling card. Grasshopper phantom head. Even though I'm gonna lose all this stuff after the beta next week or whatever, it's still interesting. The Adidized Shoddy Camo, Erad Reckoning Sub, and the White Picket Fence. Should we go? We still got a couple more. Space Jump Calling Card Salvage, and the Calamity Handgun. Okay, so I guess I can get a nuke with that handgun. Good to know. EMC is one of my favorite guns. I'm a big fan of the handguns. We got the Mars rover blowing, oh god, blowing chunks. Oh, and the saboteur striker uniform. We got one more. Got the DC M8 overdraft shotgun, rat screw striker head, and the K bar legendary version. Okay, so we're out of keys. So first impressions. So I'll start with some settings. So I mean, I play tactical flipped. You know, nothing new there. Sensitivity three three. In Black Ops 3, the entire game I played 5-5, until the last month, month and a half, I played 5-6. Nonetheless, I played, you know, that's pretty substantially high in uh, sensitivity. In this game, I feel as if, though, that's not really what you want to do. Medium is 3-3. I think medium in Black Ops 3 is 4. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I believe it's 4, but uh, the sensitivities in this game are faster. They're definitely faster. The other thing, too... Is I don't know what they're going to do with the actual game, but I know the aim assist in the beta, at least right now, is very low. So, although 3-3 seems kind of slow, uh, even for subs, like I'm using it with subs, ARs, I haven't really tried sniping yet. I can imagine that might be, you know, a little troubling to an extent, but um, no, 3-3, like, you, you really don't, the only, the only downside to it, like, I have no problem killing people, I have no problem turning around and etc. doing all that. The only time, and I found this issue with multiple sensitivities, is when someone slides directly at you, you don't have as much, like, they tend to slide kind of under your pre-aim and you don't have as much chance. Or if somebody gets very close to you, like, you're literally, like, this close to a person, and they go, like, either side of you, that's difficult. But, I mean, any sensitivity at that point, unless you're playing on a higher, a really high sensitivity and you're very, very good with it. Everything I need to do, uh, I can do on 3-3. I can turn, I can look up, I can look down, because uh, I really feel like jumping puts you at a disadvantage a lot of the time in this game. If you, from what I've taken from playing the beta so much, when you jump, I feel as if you uh, lose your aim assist. And it, it makes it a lot harder to get a lot of kills. So when you jump in the air and try to jump shot someone, a lot of the time it ends up hurting you. So if somebody's jumping up in the air, I, you know, the amount of shots they're going to hit you know, usually isn't that isn't that good. So I have time, even on three three, to you know look up, look up to the right, whatever I got to do uh, to finish out the kill. Uh, so let's talk about a few more things. So I've tried just about every gun. I'm a big fan of the NV4. I feel as if the NV4 is the most versatile assault rifle. Uh, I really like Elo. I've tried Red Dot. When I first tried Red Dot at the beginning of the game, I did not like it at all. Uh, but after trying it a little more, uh, after trying it after I got a lot of the attachments, got used to the game, etc. Uh, the Red Dot really isn't as bad as I initially thought. But the ELO site, uh, I 
I think I do favor. I honestly think I do favor. I think it. I think it's slightly better in my opinion. Uh, I think quick draw is essential in this game on any gun. Uh, stock is big for ARs. I haven't felt that way with subs, but I do think it helps. And then with the e the elo and just the nature of this gun, you don't really get any recoil. So I find like grip not even to be necessary on this gun. So in my opinion, it's either going to be a three attachment gun or long barrel. I definitely feel like long barrel has a. Uh, like it has its benefits. Um, V4, definitely the most versatile. Reminds me of an ACR type weapon. Uh, the R3K I've used. Uh, the R3K is completely hit or miss in my opinion. So you're either going to one burst and you're definitely going to get the kill. If you hit the three shots and you get that kill, I mean, like no one has a shot. If you're getting the one burst, like if you're consistently getting the one burst, nothing else is going to kill you. But when you have to fire that second burst, it really, really can kill you in this game sometimes. This is also an energy weapon, so it recharges on its own. Uh, pretty neat. I do think it's, you know, one of the better long-range weapons. Uh, the NV4 is pretty good at long-range as well, but I don't know. I guess... Uh, and then the K-Bar. Uh, the K-Bar, obviously, fastest shooting, still not much recoil. Um, let me see. So what I've been running on the K-Bar is the same setup. The ELO, Quick Draw, Stock, Long Barrel, well, Rifled Barrel. Uh, I feel as if the red dot is good on this too, but I think the grip grip is kind of necessary. Not this, uh, yeah, it's pretty necessary with the red dot. I feel like the elo, uh, the elo has less recoil on all weapons. Just just what I've taken away from playing so far. Uh, but so I feel like if I have the elo, quick draw, stock, and then the long barrel uh, complements it nicely. I do definitely feel like long barrel in this game uh, has its has its uses. Um, I've been running mainly the pub related uh, perks. And I, you know, I haven't really found the, I haven't really found perks too, too useful in this game. Obviously, blast shield is going to be huge. I mean, if you're getting nated, you need blast shield. Uh, dexterity, reload and switch weapons faster. The reloading definitely helps. A uh, ghost. I mean, I run ghosts. That's all I've ran. You know, it's pubs. Everybody's calling in UAVs, etc. So I've just been running ghosts. And then overclock. Obviously, we haven't gotten to use it. That that might be a game changer. Uh, and then this again, tack resist. Uh, unless I'm getting tactical grenades. I would run that, but I haven't found that necessary. Momentum is what I tried out originally, but after reading over it, you sprint faster over time, jumping, sliding, and wall running will reset your momentum. I jump, slide, and wall run constantly. So, but so unless I'm like running, unless I'm using overdrive or something, and I'm on the ground running constantly, and then it slightly gives me a boost, it's not really necessary. Uh, tracker, I just don't really use. It's probably going to be banned and competitive. There's really no use to use it. And then cold blooded, uh, you know, I'm not really needed for what I'm doing. Scavenger, I would probably, probably end up using, uh, especially for going for nukes, since in this game you have to use variants to get a nuke. If you're not familiar with that, uh, what that means is if I want to go for a nuke, so the NV4, I have to use uh, the legendary edition of the NV4. So the legendary edition, as you can see on the screen, nuclear 25 player kill streak earns a deatomizer strike. So that is the only way you can get a nuke. You must equip this weapon or any other legendary weapon that has that option, and you have to get 25 kills with only that gun. No kill streak kills. No, uh, I I don't know about melee kills. I can imagine no melee kills, no pistol kills, whatever. It has to be with this weapon. But I think one of the worst things that they added in this game, and they did it in AW as well, is the variant weapons. I think variant weapons are uh, shouldn't be a thing. I I very much so like supply drops and all the different the uh, the different things that they've done like crate wise and AW Black Ops Three and then this game I think it's cool how you can get taunts you can get armor for your guy you can get camos etc I think it's cool yeah it's random some people are gonna open one crate and get better stuff than a guy who opens a hundred cr crates you know at the end of the day it's random but the thing about this stuff is yesterday well actually Saturday I can recall specifically we were playing you know just playing normally. I was a level 30, uh, the two other guys I was playing with were level 30s, and we were playing against a level 11. And the level 11 had an R3K, it was the wrecked R3K, which is the epic R3K. A level 11 had the R had this. Now, that's just not really fair, because like, I, I still don't have it. And I have, I c can tell you right now, confidently, that I have 50 plus hours on the beta. That's a lot of hours, you know, I, I really uh, tried to play as much of it as I possibly could. And, you know, that already, that just... It's creating, it's five different guns. You know, you have a common version, you have a rare version, you have a legendary version, you have an epic version, as well as the normal version. And in competitive, we're not going to end up using the variants anyway. We're only going to be using the normal guns, but then you, it kind of ruins pubs. Black Ops 3 
I have to say, it was one of my favorite pub games. I'm level, I'm almost level 400. Like, I had a great time. Uh, I just felt like there wasn't a lot of stuff that made it, you know, not, not, not competitive. Because now, Black Ops 3, competitively, there wasn't that much stuff banned. There was banned protect, but initially, there was not that many things banned. So most things you played with in pubs, you know, you use competitive anyway. So it wasn't a huge deal. But in this game, if I'm running around trying to play a pub, because I don't, I don't like to shoot bots. That's one thing about me. I don't, I'm not a big fan of bot lobbies. But if I'm running around in a pub, and I'm running into these variant weapons constantly, like I'm using my NV4, you know, I want to warm up with my NV4. Well, if I'm running into NV4 flatlines or NV4 fallouts, it's not really fair. And it's not really, yeah, I mean, maybe, okay, maybe it makes it a little harder for me. But it, I just, I just think that's the worst thing. You know, they added a lot of stuff in this game that I could complain about, you know. You can, you know, do all kinds of strange things because, you know, it's in the future, it's space-related, etc. But the one thing that I really have to complain about is the variant weapons. I really wish that those were not in the game. If Like, that is my that is my biggest complaint. Uh, I was not a fan of them in AW. You couldn't even really play rank play because you're playing rank play and you want to warm up with your bow or you want to warm up with your ASM-1 and you're constantly playing against speakeasies and obsidian steeds. You know, it's not, it's not competitive. I, I don't think it's... I don't think it's fair. And then, not only that, but I mean, not everybody has those guns. Like I said, you could be in a level 11, and you could just get one out of a crate. And it's not... I just don't think that's that's good for the game. But, uh, going back... I kind of got off topic a little bit. But going back into it, uh, we'll talk about subs a little bit. So, yeah, again, I was discussing the perks. I pretty much, like, you could see the ARs, four attachments, pistol. And then I've ran Ghost, Hardline, Hardwired pretty much the entire time I played the game. Uh, I, I tried out a lot of these. I tried, well, I tried out all of them, pretty much. Uh, pinpoint doesn't really do that much. Outlines the enemy in dealing or taking weapon damage. Okay. Whatever. Uh, gung-ho, uh, not, just not really something I like to use. Uh, used it a little bit in AW. Uh, wasn't really, didn't end up really being a fan of it. I do a lot of pre-aiming, so it's not really a huge deal. Uh, marksman, acquire enemy names from a greater distance, reduce flinch. You know, you can, you can see the rest, but nonetheless... Uh, I don't feel like it really actually makes a difference when you're getting hit. Uh, when you like, I don't think it reduces the flinch that much at all. I don't think there's that much flinch uh, to deal with necessarily. So I, I don't think that it does that much. And then seeing the names from a greater distance is not really a huge deal. Uh, and then engineer, you know, if you're running into trip mines, cryo mines, whatever, uh, could help, but not really. So I've just been using hardwired. Uh, I, it it mainly because of the uh, counter UAVs. Uh, I've been using it because I've been getting counter UAV. I want to have my radar. Th this is completely like pub based uh, setup. Um, competitive, like f just from uh, just from this standpoint, I'm currently at uh, the throw nades. You're going to use blast shield. I think tacticals, as long as they don't get banned or certain tacticals don't get banned, I think they're going to be big in this game. Uh, blast, you know, you're going to have your blast shield. You you know dexterity potentially if you can run it, and uh, I'm assuming overclock at some point in time. And then, you know, tack resist if you get thrown with stuff. The other neat thing about tack resist, as you can see right there, it actually counters the melee stun. So when what that means, uh, when you're running around or whatever and you get meleeed by someone, you actually don't get stunned. So typically when that would happen, you wouldn't be able to move for a second or half a second or, you, you know, you kind of like freeze in place. That, that will allow that not to happen. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, and then, yeah, competitively, uh, I could see no third perks being ran. But, I mean, maybe it's going to be an all-dead silence game, even respawn. I, I don't know. Uh... I haven't really tried too hard to sound hard yet. I've mainly been like, you know, have my volume down or I've been listening to music, etc. But uh, the lethal grenades, I've tried out the cluster grenade, the plasma grenade, the TAR, uh, and the flechetta grenade. I guess I'm a big fan, mainly of the plasma grenade. I didn't try them. I didn't try these two out enough to really give an accurate thing. I didn't try out the trip mine seeker grenade. I've been attacked by it. It's nothing special. You can honestly outrun it. I have not tried the exploding drone. Uh, I've tried the personal radar, nothing special. Jammer grenades uh, are definitely neat. You know, jams, minimap, movement, aiming systems. Kind of like a, you know, it's like a futuristic-ish kind of stun, I guess you could say. Uh, dome shield, I actually feel kind of interesting. Uh, I kind of think the dome shield is pretty interesting. So, a lot of people don't like them. So, dome shield, if you played Halo 3, I mean, you remember. Bubble shield, you know, same thing. You throw it down... And you get inside of it, and you can't get shot, naded, whatever, if you're inside of it. Well, the thing about Halo is you had to run into the shield to destroy the bubble shield. The thing about this uh, this game in particular, y if you and a teammate start shooting at the dome shield, it doesn't last very long. So I actually think it's kind of neat uh, to have. I, I actually think it kind of, I don't know, it kind of works in the game. Because 
Now, I'm going to defend that by uh, kind of trashing the trophy system. So in this game, the trophy system, like, you know, Ghost and Modern Warfare 3, it's not like a Black Ops game. You have to place the trophy. You kind of, you, you take it out, you unfold it, whatever, and you stick it on the ground. In Black Ops 2, Black Ops 3, you would throw the trophy. So you could spawn up and throw your trophies wherever else. I like that. I really like those trophies. But in this game, I, you know, I see the dome shield being you know, being the trophy. It's just a lot easier to use. It, it makes a lot more sense. And then we haven't gotten to try uh, all, of the, all of the nades yet. And then the last thing I'm really going to talk about are the submachine guns. So we actually, between myself and everybody that I play with, we're all honestly in different places about the subs. Uh, my favorite sub is the Karma 45. One guy that I play with, his favorite sub is the Ripper Evo. I know someone that their favorite is the FHR 40. And I know someone who likes the ERAD. Uh, if I had to be honest, I think the Karma 45 is the most versatile. Now, people can say, obviously, the Ripper Evo is very versatile. It can be a sub and an AR. The, the Ripper Evo up close is insane. You know, it, it, that and the FHR at very, very close range are, you know, the best. And then when you switch to AR mode, it's kind of like a man of war almost. And it's still a very, very viable gun. But I just, I don't, I don't know. It's like... I don't like the gun in sub mode. I don't like how it feels. I don't like to shoot it. I don't like to use it. My preference. Um, Karma 45, I'm a big fan of because I can do lots of things that I can hit, you know, medium-ish range shots. I can do close range. It has a good kill time. I, I'm just a fan of the gun all around. The FHR, I didn't like at first, but I really started to like it the more I used it. Uh, the, more, the more and more I used the FHR, I became more of a fan. And I, I really do like it now. It reminds me kind of of the Vesper or Scorpion. Kind of has a good kill time range. It's very hard to use, but up close, uh, even slightly f uh, farther than that, uh, it's a very good gun. The ERAD, really like it. I really like how the ERAD feels, but I don't know how I feel about it um, damage-wise and everything else. I, I don't know how viable the gun is actually going to be. Uh, but, you know, but I guess we'll see. We haven't played anything really competitive yet, so we're going to have to see how all these guns match up against each other. The other thing is the HVR. It's not unlocked in the beta, so none of us have gotten to use it yet. Since none of us have got to use it yet, obviously we don't know, but if you look at it, you scroll through the rest of these, and even read the description, it says, um, has the best class stopping power. Which means it's the strongest sub, and it has some of the best all-around stats out of all the submachine guns. So, you know, we haven't tried this gun yet. I think I did hear of a few people who used it at the Cod XP and didn't like it that much. I did hear some other people at Codex P that went to Codex P that said uh, it's going to be the best sub, so we're going to have to find out. You know, I, I couldn't really tell you what uh, if it's going to be the best or not. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. Now, the classic guns, I don't know. If they're all unlocked in private match and they're good, I can't imagine they won't be in competitive. But nonetheless, this video went a little longer than I expected. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And I appreciate everybody for watching. Have a great day. See you guys.